Hi, hello. Welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is March 31st, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well, in good spirits, with high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good, feeling well. Let's see, I do have some food corner to report. I decided to treat myself to a pizza at work. So I... uh, door dash in order i know i know i said i was gonna do better but i'm i this is at least under 20 dollars okay so it's progress you know it's only one day but i got the pretzel pizza with the cheese sauce and i've gotten it before but i gotta say they've made some improvements uh same pretzel crust so i mean which i'm assuming it's not actually pretzel that's my theory but I mean, they put salt on that. They put salt around around that rim, rim, rim. So I'm good with it. I enjoyed it. And they also have the cheese cup of sauce that comes with it. So I was grubbing. I was very happy. I was satisfied. Uh, but yeah, I think it. the thing that was nice about it now is it didn't like destroy the roof of my mouth. Like I pretty much ate all that pizza and I was fine. And uh, usually, what's this? My third or fourth time eating that pizza and this is the only time I'm like, wow, yeah, my mouth is good. I'm solid. Let's see. I'm trying to think what else is there. Oh, I have a little bevy section. I don't know why. I, I guess I instinctively just opened it. And I was like, ah, shit. I, you know, for the ASMR, should have done that. But uh, sorry. But I got another beer. First try from me. Sapphire Haze. Uh, it's a fretboard brewing company. Which is uh, in Blue Ash, so it's local. Go Ohio, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, alcohol volume is six point seven, and it is a hazy India Pale Ale. So I'm excited for this. Let's give it a give it a t- sip. Yep, that's that's what I was expecting. I like it. It's it it, it has this hoppy flavor. Which is exactly what I'm expecting when someone tells me, one, IPA. Second, when you're saying hazy, because that's usually what that means. Um, but yeah, it's got like a citry kind of, citrusy kind of vibe to it. I like it. feels light. Alrighty. Um, oh yeah. Might as well just take my full break here, if you know what I mean. Regulars no. Newsies no. <laughs> Ooh. <coughs> Oop. Oopsie. All right. Also, sorry if you hear any chatter. Uh, obviously, my studio is my bedroom. So, you know, we're working with the resources we got. And sometimes, you know, we have a lively, neighborly audience, I guess you'd say. But um, let's go ahead and get into some news. Let's talk about some stuff. Happy Friday, by the way. Uh, from the Independent, Andrew Tate released from prison after three months and put under house arrest. So this is, I think, like the third appeal has taken place, or maybe the fourth. A controversial influencer Andrew Tate and his brother, who is Tristan Tate, has been have been released from prison in Romania and placed under house arrest after winning an appeal over their detention. A Bucharest Court of Appeal ruled in favor of Tate's appeal, which challenged a judge decision last week to extend a, his arrest a fourth time. So it was the third time he's gotten um, uh, like his stay extended. Now, there was an investigation into trafficking crimes, uh, tra- trafficking claims against Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate, but it looks like the investigation is still ongoing, but there's no charges. So definitely, you know, I mean, I was hoping to see like, hey, we're going to get a trial date set or something to that effect. But it looks like no. Uh, but that being said, I mean, this, I don't think this conversation's over. Uh, I, I will say, too, I didn't I'm, I haven't watched South Park in a while. So I, I really haven't really touched the new season or anything like that. But I heard that there was an episode about Andrew Tate, and I recently had read an article 
looked at some of the scenes and stuff like that. And apparently Andrew Tate's people told him and he's been doing like a kind of correspondence. So like his team has his Twitter account and they'll they'll post what he wants to talk about. And maybe I can find it real quick. Um, Andrew Tate. Damn it. I don't want to see more of him. Andrew Tate's. Sorry about this, guys. I'm going to see if I can find it. Response to South Park. There we go. Is a response to South Korea? That'd be crazy. Let's see if it loads. On the fly here. Oh, man. <coughs> um, do, do, do. And this is from Dextero. Oh, I can just read it. When I will be proven innocent, I look forward to help create the greatest South Park episode of all time. Awesome. Um, though I will say the episode did seem pretty funny um, from what I saw. Uh, he gets into like a shootout with the police or some shit. So that's funny to me. Oh, okay. My computer's like l lagging. Anyway. So hopefully I can keep you posted on any more like big Tate news. I do try to keep it in terms of like, okay, this is relevant. This is newsworthy, you know, whatever. But that's a, pretty much all I got here. Also, there was, uh, I think, two other women who were arrested with him as well who are also out and not, there's no charges. So, so yeah, there's that. Let's see. In some more news, I covered this on the Patreon on Monday, but it turns out a verdict came through on the Gwyneth Paltrow case. So we can go ahead and just put a lid on that. From the Associated Press, Gwyneth Paltrow gets vindication at ski collision trial. So this takes place um, from an incident in 2016. This was at like a posh Utah ski resort. Uh, essentially, it was a matter of who was, you know, downhill, who was uphill. Pretty much if you were uphill in this situation, you're the one who caused the collision. You're guilty. Now, Terry Anderson or Terry Sanderson, I think is what it is. Uh, who is a retired optometrist, he initially tried to file a suit for $3.1 million against Gwyneth Paltrow over this, claiming that she hit him and ruined his whole life. He got hit so hard that he had to get a divorce. And I know it's kind of like, it's like, why are you laughing? You, you, but you really have to see it and see this whole thing unfold. There was, there's a lot said in this trial. I, I missed a lot because obviously I just wasn't able to sit down and actually watch it. But from just the stuff I've heard, it, it's it's crazy. But he had to come off of the three point one million. He decided to go for three hundred thousand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now Gwyneth Paltrow countersued for a dollar. And also, I believe, plus legal expenses. So essentially, her winning is just saying, hey, I just get this dollar for symbolic value. And, you know, I just want my, my legal fees paid and I'm walking out. So after she won, she was pretty classy about it. She, you know, walked over, you know, leaned in. And I, I think she said more, more or less, I wish you well. And he said, thank you, dear, um, which, you know, surprisingly very cold, cordial. So that's that's good. That's nice that everyone was on the up about it. I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people have a lot of opinions on who was guilty, who's not guilty. Uh, I think that uh, Gwen Paltrow had her kids come through and testify on her behalf. Also, there was like an expert that somehow proved that it had to have been him who hit her and then she like split her skis whereas according to him she hit him and busted his ribs up and all this stuff and like i said he was never the same never ever the same he was getting very emotional on the stand with paltrow she said oh i lost like half a day of ski time and you know that's that that's what i was out on this 
Apparently, skiing is like, super important to her. Her dad used to ski, something like that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, this, this, it, it really did feel like a, a white lotus, like, meets law and order scene. And I think people really ate this up because we just like being able to peer into a celebrity's life one way or another, especially in something like this because it's like legal court case. Oh, guilty, not guilty. Also, I think we, we are, you know, fiending for that kind of thing this year just because last year, I, I was everyone was attentive, myself included, in the Johnny Depp Amber Heard thing. So I think this was kind of just like a treat of that. Um, but yeah, I mean that being said, I mean hopefully Terry Sanderson's doing all right. You know, hopefully he's doing okay. He's bounced back. Uh, they kind of go as far as to say that a lot of the stuff he was suffering from or going through is like, I mean he's like a seventy six year old dude. Like you know, you just kind of. He's kind of over the hill. <laughs> and I'm that's not me saying that. I feel like that's more or less the p- picture that Paltrow's team was trying to portray. Like, it's not the, the crash that did this. It's not the incident that did this. It was just, like, him getting old. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. It was it definitely was an interesting case. I don't think there's too much more to cover there. But, you know, if anything pops up, of course, you know, I'll hit it up. Let's see. Uh, from ABC News, nine dead after two Black Hawk helicopters crash in Kentucky. So this was uh, some sad news. Took place in Trigg County, Kentucky. All nine service members on board have died after two U.S. Army Black Hawk helicopters crashed during a training mission. Um, let's see. The black helicopters from the 101st Airborne Division, one with five on board and another with four on board, were on a routine training mission when they crashed at about 10 p.m. on Wednesday. The helicopters were flying a multi-ship formation under night vision goggles. So there is a black box that is in helicopters, or at least something akin to a black box. So hopefully after that, maybe they're going to get some more information to show what happened, what was, what took place. But definitely sad that there was just like such a big loss of life like this. I think both the helicopters went down in like a wooded, semi-wooded area. No one else was hurt. So no civilians, no, I don't think there was any other damage outside of maybe some like trees or something like that. So definitely unfortunate, but glad like this wasn't you know during a busy time of day or you know over a busy intersection or anything like that so but yeah definitely a very tragic situation for sure and also just it's i hate to do that this thing that i do where i go i start like trying to connect dots i was there's no dots to really connect here but just like like oh my gosh there's so many trains like oh my gosh like I, 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 we've covered before on the podcast, like, a Black Hawk helicopter going down. It's like, oh, my gosh, it's crazy. But these things happen. And especially when you look at the idea, of like, oh, this is a training situation. So, and, and, and uh, even taking it back to Kobe and, and all that kind of shit, like, not to be morbid or anything like that, but I don't, I don't want to ever ride a helicopter, period. It, it doesn't matter how much money you have. Uh, I'm just not doing it military whatever no thank you it it would what would it take to get me in a helicopter we'd have to be living in like world war z times that's that's what it would take because i'm not i'm just not i'm not down and i really don't want the small little two four seater one i want the uh the big one you definitely gotta get me in like a big i don't know army type one because i, I want to feel comfortable if I'm going to be on this this thing. Then again, it just doesn't feel like any of these helicopters are safe. So count me out. Uh, let's see. We can buzz on to another article from the Associated Press. Video shows guards walking away during fire that killed 38. After migrants in northern Mexico place mattresses against the bars of their detention cell and set them on fire, guards quickly walked away and made no apparent attempt to release the men before smoke filled the room and killed 38 men. Surveillance video showed Tuesday. Now, 
I'd heard a little bit about this at the top of the week, middle of the week, and then I haven't heard too much since. And I haven't heard until I read, you know, before getting into this episode, that there were guards on the scene and they didn't do anything. Not only did they not do anything, they also more or less quickly ran away. Getting into a little bit more of the details of what happened, the guards were able to, I think, get in and and help some women out. But any of the men who were locked up in, in the, you know, in, in cells, they weren't able to be let out until firefighters hit the scene because the officers were just, they just didn't want to get them. And I get it. You're scared. But these are people's lives on the lines. And you went through all this hassle of taking them off the street and putting them in this detention center. And then you're also telling them that, oh, we're going to kick you to the, you know, back to your country where you're from. Um, it does have a list of, let's see, at the time of the blaze, 68 men from Central and South America were being held at the facility. The agency said, the Institute said almost all were from Guatemala, Honduras, Venezuela, and El Salvador. Also, that even though this takes place in the, um, the city of Juarez, I believe, yes, it's, this is definitely a U.S. tie situation. We've covered before where Biden's like, oh, okay, Jack, all right, you just got to dial up on this app and you can't come to the border directly, especially if you pass any of these like countries along the way, which is Mexico is definitely one of them. You have to stop there and then you have to say, okay, I'm going to apply for asylum and then you're going to take me in. Now, in a lot of ways, that spread like wildfire even before that, that you actually could come to the border and just get asylum, and people are still running off of that. So there's just been a lot of tension, a lot of chaos over that. Plus, the app itself is terribly trash. Even though they keep saying they're going to make it better and update it, I've heard as lately as like this week where people are still trying, and they're like, I can't even get this app to like get past a processing wheel. You know, I've had that problem on my fucking computers and and phones. Imagine you're trying to do this shit so that you can get from some poverty-stricken, war-torn, whatever area, and you're stuck in this area with no money, with no job, no prospects. You're trying to get to America, and this app is not letting you in. It's not even letting you work it. It's like, what are you going to do? Meanwhile, you get shuffled over to this detention center, detention centers like it, very terrible means, and then you're you're processing. And they're saying, "Oh, we have, we're going to kick a bunch of you guys out." So back to the guys who are you know paid to be looking after you in this whole process. You're telling me that they were too. I hate to say it, but chicken shit to fucking unlock the doors, do the maximum, do the most. Like you have to, you just fucking have to. Uh, I, it 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 makes me upset to hear anything less when. You guys are literally putting these people in these cells, in these situations, when you could just have better policies, you know? So, yeah, I I do have contempt for, you know, the officers and stuff like that involved. You know, I'm just going to say that. (sighs) But um, I know that the numbers were at least a little bit higher, but they made some mistakes in counting. So, I think, yeah, it's 38 from the initial 40. But I think also, like, I think 28 people were injured. And or like in like critical condition. So remains to be seen. I do hope this kind of shit gets better. But I don't know. I, I highly doubt it. It, it. It's a really sad situation that these people are put in these just subpar situations. Like very just bad conditions for any human to be living in. And all they want is a chance at a better life. Just what everyone wants. Like, it's, it's everyone, I, don't, I think it, it transcends the American dream bullshit. Like, everyone just wants to live well and just be all right, you know? Take care of their family and, and just be, just have a life, you know? And you should just, you shouldn't have to go through all this. I, I, I can at least understand the anger of saying, hey, I've made it this far and you're going to try to kick me all the way back to zero? Are you fucking kidding me? So I, I also hate that, like, what is it, Oberdor, the president, more or less tried to more put the focus and blame on them. Like, well, they acted out. They shouldn't have done this. They clearly made a mistake. Yada, yada, yada. And it's like, 
You ever think you guys are making a mistake? You ever think we're making a mistake on this whole fucking policy shit that we have? I don't know. I I, I don't. I'm. I, I can always talk about the shit till I'm blue in the face. I'm not gonna stop because I I think not just America but a lot of the world just has a really weird just attitude about borders and who should be in their country and who shouldn't because to me it's just like everyone should be in their country why 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 <laughs> like you should want to be as diverse as possible it only makes things better but then people get like weirdly xenophobic in 2023 it's like it's crazy that, that shit just never dies i used to like learn about that in history and think it was such an old ass thing but it's like no it's just people have this like knee-jerk reaction to be like that and it's very sad and it's very strange where it's like when you can just accept people who are different than you, working with them, living with them, there's so much advantages to it. There's so much advantages. When people, they try to go, oh, no, this is the reason why there's more crime. It's like, sh- just stop, dude. And, and that's, and I'm using like Southern American accent, but like you can make that French, you can make that whatever accent you want. And it, you're going to find people who are like that of every creed and color. And I hate that. I hate that mentality. All right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm ripping and ranting. I got one more thing to do. Got one more article to cover before I let you guys go. My little newsies. Ooh, wee. We're jamming. And by we, I mean my neighbors are jamming. I'm listening. <laughs> From Reuters. <coughs> U.S. backstops Silicon Valley Bank sale to first citizens. So this is an update. I'd say it's a big update. I haven't talked about banks or so for about a week. Things have been kind of cooling down, which is nice. I think the last big thing we covered was Credit Suisse getting taken over. So... You know, still RIP, we'll miss you, my favorite cocaine bank, but, you know, everything's seemingly well now. Um, That being said, First Citizens is definitely getting away with it. They are scooping up SVB for up to $500 in stock. So that's like a very big deal, like it's a steal, just because... What it was rated at before was in the billions, and you're just getting it for, like, half a billion. So that's very nice. And not to mention you're getting, like, a lot of, like, liquidity protection, I think, from, like, the FDIC or what have you. There's a lot of, like, mumbo-jumbo jargon that I'm going to try to avoid here while just giving it to you as the best layman I can do because that's all I am. Uh, let's see. The U.S. regulators on Monday said... Uh, They would backstop a deal for regional lender First Citizens bank shares to acquire failed Silicon Valley Bank, triggering an estimated $20 billion hit to a government-run insurance fund. Uh, But, you know, we talked how, you know, the government or the FDIC uh, took over for the bank in, like, receivership or whatever I think is what it's called. But essentially, none of the taxpayers are involved in terms of, like, putting up any money, which is obviously a big deal. We're talking about bailouts and things of that nature, and no one wants that. So essentially, these are all, like, lending, and, like, it's all from, like, a bank money pool, bank-membered money pool. So essentially, it's them covering for themselves. But obviously, the fear is, like, if this keeps happening or it's too big, eventually it's just going to exceed that, and that's... You know, it's just no good, you know, and and, and also uh, it, it to me and I think to some others as well that you have to ask, this, did this even need to happen? Like, did we need to have this coverage where, you know, you made all these people who had more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars, which is what you're covered for from the FDIC? Like we make them whole. We, we just do that. Like maybe they would have been made whole in time. They just would have had to wait it out. Um, clearly there were still people who did remain at SVB because they're now a part of First Citizens. So these things could have potentially corrected themselves in time, but a lot of people with money who had, you know, Twitter accounts or whatever, 
got out of the group chats and said, hey, if you don't help us out, if we don't stop this here, then it's going to be your bank or your bank or your bank. And it's like, probably not, but people freaked out and then bank runs happened. So, I mean, I think this has all been really crazy to watch happen. Uh, it's weird to see these people with so much money crying and whining, and the next thing you know, they're just getting what they want, and, and everyone's like, oh, no, this is, this is fine. Don't freak out. It's okay. And it's like, yeah, I, I, I wasn't going to freak out, but it's kind of crazy that these guys are just getting fully comped, but if this happened to fucking me, I, I would be out of my little fucking, little bit of fucking money I have. Uh, but... I don't know. It is what it is. It's a wonderful life, if you will. Uh, like I'm, I'm glad that it's at least not looking like it's gonna get worse, you know. Uh, but hey, I'm I'm with the big bank, so I don't care. <laughs> I wasn't too worried about it for real, for real. But it just, you know, obviously these things can kind of grow and grow and grow and become a big concern potentially. But yeah, I think that's all I got today. Try not to drag things out too much for you guys. Thank you for the clickers. You know, the people who just, you know, they, they, they turn it on, you know, just for a little bit. Hear me talk a little bit and then they tune on, go about the rest of their life. I love you. You're great. For the, for the real ones, the newsies, the, the, the lovers of news, if you will. Um, thank you for hanging out this long. Uh, I do have to shill a little bit. Just got to do it. But patreon.com slash Isaiah News if you would like to become a full-fledged newsy, you get access to bonus episodes I do. You also get the hot link to the Discord, though the Discord is free. I always like to mention that. You can just hit me up. I'll send you that link. But you get a quick like there. Also, you do a shout-out. You get a shout-out once a month, newsy roll call, where you can plug whatever you like, and I will shout it out on the podcast for you. So that's all on the table. But free ways to hit me up, Isaiah News one at gmail.com actually did i say my patreon wrong patreon.com says isaiah news i think i i sometimes get them jammed up yeah patreon.com says isaiah news that's where you go for the money thing <laughs> can't can't get that mixed up but the free free way to just like hit me up for whatever isaiah news one at gmail.com and also i have twitter and i have facebook they're available i'm unverified but I'm real in the streets, baby. <laughs> uh, that's all I got. Hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.